Hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from Last Stand Gamers, and welcome. So it's Thursday, and Thursday means one thing. We've got a new and exciting update from the Space Engineers developers. And I have to say, it's quite an explosive star. We're actually going to have a look at the new volumetric explosions. So this is both affecting warheads and missiles. And if we fire at this first target, we can actually see the effect almost straight away. How the warhead, or well, the missile in this case, has actually affected the target differently. And the idea of this sort of explosion is that the armor now can reflect the damage from the warhead. So if we fire it at the two layers, we're actually going to see a little bit of a different result. We're getting the same sort of blast radius as we standardly saw before, but we're actually having it directly impact the actual target. So if we fire it at the next one, you can actually see we've got the same sort of blast, the same sort of penetration, but it's a lot more bald around the actual rocket. So when the rocket strikes, each layer of armor is going to reflect how much damage it can actually do the warhead and it'll stop it from penetrating as long as there's a layer of armor actually intact at the back whatever's on the back side of it will be intact now something quite interesting i wanted to test out was sloped armor to actually see if it made any effect so if we fired at this one you can actually see that it reflects and for some reason it seems to do a lot more damage against against the actual reflected armor but what is also quite interesting is it's actually stopped the warhead where the one sheet at the start has actually penetrated right through this layer has actually stopped the warhead at this sort of angle and by the look of the explosions it looks like it's actually been spread out along the angle so that's really interesting to actually have a look at now let's move on to the heavy armor and if we fire at the heavy armor straight away we'll actually be able to see some quite interesting results We've got it blocking that standard one sort of rocket, and heavy armor can absorb quite a few rounds, so if we fire one or two rocket systems in this next target, you'll be able to see just how much stronger it is, and you can actually see the rocket sort of twizzle and bend as it's trying to reflect off there. Now if we move on to the final layer, three layers of armor, and we fire a good volley of five or six missiles at this, you'll really be able to actually notice how strong it actually is compared to the lighter layers. And it's something that I've noticed is it seems to be the more you fire at it and the angle that you fire at it really affects how the rocket actually penetrates. Now, we've actually got an item behind the next few targets. So if we set up for these next targets, what you'll find is we've got a generator acting as a person or just an object on the interior side of your wall. So the generator here is going to be alive or dead depending on what happens to the outer wall of the target. So if you fire a rocket of that outer wall, you're going to see it's penetrated straight through and it's destroyed the reactor. If this wall was intact, it might be a different result. Now we've got two layers of light armor and we'll have to see what this does. So if we fire another rocket, so if we fire another rocket at this target, you can actually see the armor is actually stopped and it's not penetrated through and damaged the engine at all, but we've still got quite a nasty damage sort of mark. Now moving on to the next target, this is heavy armor, and heavy armor has a much more stronger property. So if we fire two rockets at this with a little bit of an interval between them, you can actually see it stop the first one. Now if another one fires at it, you can actually see it starting to penetrate now, and then it'll take another one or two more rockets to actually break it all the way through and get that reactor destroyed. Just a really nice sort of addition to this sort of armor and explosives, seeing how they actually bounce off and how sloped armor is actually affecting it. Now, if we place another round on the center of that sloped armor on the lower level, I just want to see exactly if we can penetrate through it now. And it looks like we've managed to penetrate through it from that more direct straight angle as he's aimed down. But we're gonna have to do definitely a bit more experimentation with the sloped armor. And I happen to have a block over here. So in this far left side target, we've got one more layer. So if our ship becomes level with the armor and he brings himself down slightly and now he fires at it. I want to see the exact sort of reflection. You can see that there's some sort of reflection but it looks like we've actually got a penetration but it's really interesting to see the damage as it hits the angled armor and exactly what's happening. We're gonna to have to do a lot more experimentation with this. Now we're moving inside to actually have a look at the assemblers and the arc furnace. Now a number of small features have been done to this. Now the blast furnace can actually process some other types of metal. So if we head on over, we hit K, we can actually get our cobalt ore. And you can see it's going to be processing that, that away. So that's quite useful. 
So moving on, let's have a look at the assemblers. Now the assemblers have a new feature called cooperative mode, and this allows a main assembler to split the load, split the production between a number or a whole variety of assemblers speeding up the production. So let's have a look at how we can do that. So let's press K. We can go in our control panel and there's two ways of doing this. So you can actually select all the ones you want and tick cooperative mode. And if that is ticked, that means that these will be secondary assemblers and everything that's produced in the unticked ones will be split among the ones with the tick. So if I move into production, what you'll also be able to tell is if it is a secondary or main cooperative mode by the box here. So if I go to number six, you'll see that this one is going to accept a payload from another assembler. So let's produce something in the main assembler. Let's go with a few steel plates. And as we go through the other assemblers, you'll see it's actually split in the payload between the others. And now I think we've actually run out of iron. But you can see what it's doing. Very nice effect. It's going to help with production a lot. Now, what I'm going to show you next is to do with the antennas. We have a new feature. Say you're traveling through a quite dangerous area of space, and my little antenna there is broadcasting my signal both to that blue ship all the way over there, as well as that red ship. And I don't want to attract that necessary attention. So if I hit K and I go onto my antenna, that's Mark with Henry, I can enable broadcasting by ticking this box. And I'm going to disable that. So by ticking that, as you can see, my ship no longer has its antenna, but I can still receive signals from other ships. So this means I can just pass through this area of the galaxy without attracting too much attention. And once I get back into a friendly area, I could be safe and I can just turn my antenna back on. Anyway, I'd like to thank you guys for watching and I can't wait to experiment a little bit more with these new sort of explosive blast waves.